Hello and welcome to part two of our shooting gallery countdown setup, which will be looking at how to create a shooting gallery in the real world space using plane tracking uh, as a basis. So in the last video, we just created a simple countdown patch. I'm just going to right click on this and just create an asset from it, just so I've got this patch uh, available to use again if I want to in the future. So what we need to do is we need to now set up our scene to actually have our objects in there. And the way I've done this is I actually um, opened up Blender and I just created a simple, oh, there we go, a simple 3D target object. Uh, again, this is nothing super basic, uh, complicated. You could just use planes with a target image on or you could uh, source one online. I just wanted to make something quickly. So I created this, export this as a .obj, and I'm just going to import this into my Spark project. So to do that, I'm just going to go to add asset, import from my computer, and I'm just going to find my target.obj, like so. And this will be the targets that we're going to be shooting. Uh, we don't need to do anything with it quite yet because there's a few more things we need to uh, set up first. Um, but this will be our 3D object that's going to be in our scene, essentially. So when we're working with plane trackers, uh, plane trackers uh, work slightly differently to target trackers because target trackers will base will only detect or show objects when that image is shown. Plane trackers will show the object when a flat surface is shown as well. Uh, you can't use plane tracking on vertical surfaces, only on horizontal. And you may also find that your performance is very, very dependent on what type of phone you have uh, and also how uh, much light levels or how flat the detection is within the space that you're in. So it's not a perfect effect. And like I said, um, depending on what phone you have, this will work either better or worse. Um, but you can also deploy this on Instagram, um, but just bear that in mind that not every user will get the same experience. So I'm just going to add object and add a plane tracker, like so. And this will instantly change our view. So we actually now we move that person, we've got this uh, sort of space uh, grid view. And I'm just going to also select this rectangle and just move this to the top middle, just so it's out of the way for now, because I don't really need to worry about that at this point in time. So with my plane tracker selected, I'm just going to right click on it and add a null object. I'm just going to rename this null object main controller. And you'll see why we do that later on. And I'm just going to also then right click on that again and add a second null object. And the second null object will be our targets control. So the way we do, well, the reason we're doing null objects is we're using null objects to control um, everything that's nestled within it. So these are basically the parents and whatever the parents do, the children that are linked to it will also follow those actions. So now I've done that, I'm just going to select my target and drag this onto my target controller null object like so. Now this object I've created is obviously too large, so I will have to just adjust its values. So I'm just going to adjust its scale to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And I am just for the time being going to rotate this 90 degrees on the Y axis, like so. Uh, I'm also just going to move this up in the air a little bit. Now, where I position this at the moment isn't going to be super important because we're going to be using randomizers to somewhat move this target around our space so it's not always in the same location every time we reset the game. Um, and we're also going to add some movement to it as well. Um, but that's just, for time being, I'm just going to leave it there just so we can see it in this space. I'm just going to duplicate that target two more times, so I've got three targets. And this uh, second target, I'm just going to move over here and I'm going to uh, keep this rotated at zero. So it's sort of side onto the camera. 
And again, I'm not going to worry too much about the position of these at this moment in time because we're going to control the position within the patch editor. This is just more so we've got a kind of visualization of what we're trying to achieve as we're doing it here. Right. So that is our basic scene setup. Um, I'm just going to also input some more assets. So in order to know what targets I've hit, um, until we've got a proper score system, which we'll look at in a future video when we re revisit this, because that's going to involve some JavaScript. Um, so we're just going to go and import some more assets for time being. And I've created somewhere I should have created some assets that tell us whether it's been hit or not. Yeah. So I've just created this, uh, just sent this uh, target image here. And I'm just going to go to my canvas. I'm going to right click add a rectangle. I'm going to align this to the top corner. I'm just going to scale this down by 20. Just so we've got this tiny little plane up here. I'm going to just create a new material. This new material I'm just going to call target not hit. Making sure I've got the uh, there we go, like so. I'm going to then give this my target texture and I'm just going to change this color to be black just so we've got this kind of uh, grayed out, darkened target image. I'm going to rename this rectangle to be uh, target one not hit. Duplicate that and call the second one target two. And third one, target three. So these are just going to be the um, sort of visual indicators for the time being to the player that these targets haven't yet been hit in their scene, just so they know how many targets there are that they need to find. And again, this will be uh, overwritten at some point with a score system. So I'm just going to place these up here like so. I'm not going to worry too much about what they look like. I'm then going to select these three targets, Commit Command D to duplicate them move these to the very bottom like so. I'm just going to rename each of these to have just say target one hit, target two hit and target three hit. And again it seems like we're a lot of uh, little, uh, tedious, tedious work but by setting this all up now it will save us some work later on when we get to the patch editor start page. So it's new material I'm just going to give out my target image again but this time I'm not going to do anything with the colour, I'm going to just make sure it's flat, like so. So what we're doing here is every time we hit one of these, it's going to associate to one of these three targets up here, and then change the visibility of the rectangle to be visible to show that target's been hit, or if it's not been hit, to keep the non-hit rectangle visible instead. So that's now our basic scene set up. We can now actually finally get on to the uh, difficult part of the patch editor. So we're going to do that in the next video, just so we uh, don't make this video run too long. Um, this has just been the initial setup stage of all assets. Next stage, we'll get to the nitty gritty of hooking this all together in the patch editor. So I'll see you again soon.